All right, so I have pretty minimal experience with the Metroid series. I've played Super Smash Brothers. I played Super Metroid a couple years ago and half of Prime 1, along with some reviews and internet let's plays here and there, yada yada, that kind of thing. The point is that I don't have heavy nostalgia or a deep relation to the series or its characters to feel a passionate review about. So, instead, to give it some relation to things I know and care about, and to put an interesting spin on it, I propose a theory. Ridley equals Broly, and people love Ridley for the same reasons they love Broly. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. Note that this is mostly going to be about the older Broly because I haven't seen the new movie yet and I know more about him. Let's get into it. Big, 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 big! They're both fucking huge! Ridley is so big he couldn't be put into Smash. Broly is so big he can't be a good character in Fighters. These two come from the same family tree of giant monsters, with just some slight lateral mutations of Godzilla and pro wrestlers. I mean, look at them. They're both big, strong aliens with tails and share a love for one color. They even both come back several times with new designs, with, uh, interesting results. Man, Bioberly sucks so much. He got beat by Krill and Chill. Drin. Like, who gets beat by Krill and Chill? That, who? That's like losing to Yamcha, like, who do we even the uh, Oh. 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 Everyone out here losing to Yamcha. They are savages, born and raised to burn and raise. They are designed almost solely for their intimidation factor. If you talk about their respective series, chances are they are like the third thing that gets talked about. You know, behind like the bad parts of the series, because everyone likes to be negative. Alright, so Bridley and Rolly are simple characters, with simple evil motivations and simple underwhelming backstories. That do give them both personal connections to the main characters. I mean, Ridley is basically born consuming Samus's parents, as far as I'm willing to research. And he's also a space pirate, apparently? Apparently he talks and commands a fleet of pirates, like what? Like, that gives him more relation to Bojack than it does Bro- Never mind, let's just move on to the gameplay part. These two have really similar movesets. They got long-reaching limbs, big obnoxious projectiles, command grabs, on hit grabs, both even have the drag across the map. Even got some of the worst hitboxes for big bodies. Who are you even trying to hit with that? They both got command grabs, but aren't grapplers built around them like the Macho Cat and the Macho Bot 16? They have okay combos, but they hit like trucks. But like big trucks driving big buses. Big damage for like one or two hits. The playstyle for these two is to keep people out with your long range. Stiff arm them. Don't get near me. Hit them with the sexual harassment. Don't touch me. And then you land your confirm with your long limbs. And then you become the band and him with the. The long and short of it is people love these two because they're badasses. They're the little boy toys of yesteryear the giant monster action figures you would play with and mash against each other. They filled you with that testosterone, that macho, macho feeling of no girls alloudness as the big boys did battle with each other. They were the formative parts of your childhood and led to you grinding out MMO dungeons to the thumping vibe of metal music. They aren't engaging or complex because they weren't meant to be. They were meant to be the fun Saturday morning cartoon villains turned into real threats. And I think that's just wonderful. It's just not entirely for me. I just wasn't there to absorb their impact as a child. I didn't watch the Broly movies or play the Metroid games until a couple years ago. And by that time, I was just too old to get into that kind of giant monster thing. I mean, I sit around watching cutesy anime about a cat. Fucking look at her, she's adorable. She's typing a typewriter, but instead of words, his cat poses are so cute. And it's symbolic of her depiction of the world around her, the emotions of her owner, her trying to communicate her feelings in human speak. It's really just an interesting dive into the psyche of her animals. 
But if you look closely right here, you can see she isn't typing at all. She's just pressing her paw into the paper. That's a fucking sham! Alright, see you guys next time. Peace out.